Hi there. Um, my name is Stephen Clannell. I'm a keen amateur photographer. Um, for the dual purposes of commemorating World Photography Day and also my company's well-being agenda, I was asked if I would um, prepare a little presentation about um, my journey in photography. Um, and given this photography is something that is incredibly close to my soul, something I'm very passionate about, I, I, I jumped at the chance. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't be there on the day, so I prepared this in advance. Um, my favourite analogy about photography is that a camera is both a window and a mirror. The window shows what was going on in front of the camera, but the mirror shows what was going on behind it in the mind and the intention of the photographer. I want to explore with you the view from my camera front and back. I want to tell you a little bit about my journey to my love of photography and the various genres of photography that I love and why it's played an important part in underpinning what I came to term life 2.0 and indeed 3.0. But first I have to tell you a different story. And as many stories go, it starts with a boy meeting a girl. I was born romantic. I always envisaged the thought of marrying a woman I love and starting a family with her as being the epitome of my potential achievements. So as luck would have it, I found myself entering my mid-thirties single and miserable. And then I met Esther, a beautiful and brilliant woman from Transylvania. She first transfixed and then delighted me as we moved rapidly from colleagues to friends, friends to lovers, lovers to fiancés. My hitherto underappreciated camera became a means of documenting our life together. Photographs of our adventures donned the halls of our home. Life was phenomenal. And then, at just 28 years old, Esther died. And life was over. squatting in the ruins of my life, in silence and darkness where once were noise and light, I slowly began the process of recovering. Work became an important cornerstone to give meaning to the days, but I found that I needed something to give purpose to life outside of my career. I needed to get out of the house. I needed to do things. I needed to occupy my mind with something other than thoughts of what was and would never be again. I needed to find a way to appreciate the beauty in the world again. One cold January day, while I was still hiding from the future in my parents' spare room, I took myself for a long aimless ramble along the banks of Cow Green Reservoir in Teesdale in County Durham. It was a fairly miserable affair, grey and full of drizzle and a biting wind that seemed to be in my face regardless of the direction I walked. On my way back to the car from an unsuccessful attempt at climbing down Cauldron Snout Waterfall, I was transfixed by the low clouds rolling down the hills on the other side of the water. Almost completely obscuring the land, they lent an air of mystery and savage beauty to the landscape before me. Without much thought beyond wishing to savour the gorgeous vista and record it, I took a photo with my iPhone. Or, to be accurate, I took several photos until I was satisfied with the view that I'd captured. I then loaded a simple editing application and tweaked the picture until I felt that it was in some way conveying the majesty that I had witnessed. In this short passage of time, I was completely consumed by the landscape by the desire to take a compelling photograph of it, and by the ambition to edit that photograph to adequately record something that had quite literally stopped me in my tracks. For the first time in weeks, I was focusing on something other than the pain of the immediate past and what, who had been lost. In hindsight, it is not a great image, but it is one of the most important I've ever created. Through photography, I had discovered mindfulness. Mindfulness as a concept is, is one of those things that 
can almost seem a little bit like hippie gibberish, but I think it's quite important. Um, the definition from the NHS is it can be easy to rush through life without stopping to notice much. Paying more attention to the present moment, to your own thoughts and feelings, and to the world around you can improve your well-being. Some people call this awareness mindfulness, and it can help us to enjoy life more and to understand ourselves better. In my mind, I liken it to parallel processing. Um, if I fill my conscious mind with things to focus upon other than my worries, or in this case, my, my grief, then my subconscious is free to get on with dealing with them. Um, I'm going to share with you some of my landscape images that are best representative of this period um, in my, uh, what I came to call my, my interregnum uh, period. Um, and a little bit about how the, they helped with this mindfulness concept. So it, it, it quickly became clear to me that I wasn't interested in just straightforward pictorial representative images. I didn't want to just take a snapshot of a pretty scene and, and that was that. I, I, I needed to put a bit more into it, a bit more of myself. Um, and uh, the images that I've chosen to show you are all in some way or other impressionistic. They convey a sense of the experience of being in a location rather than simply a representation of what that scene looks like. To do that requires an adoption of various techniques beyond simply pointing the camera and pressing the button. Um, and the number one technique that I, that I tend to adopt is that of long exposure photography. So literally keeping the, the camera shutter open for longer than normal, be it a fraction of seconds, a few seconds, or even a few minutes. Um, in order to, to do something different with the scene. Uh, long exposure photography is often associated with doing something with motion. Um, the classic one, as in this image here, is um, smoothing out the flow of water. Or it could do something exciting uh, and dramatic, as you can see with the, the, the clouds in, in this image. Um, but it allows you to, 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 to put some artistic, uh, some creative intent behind the, the scene. And in order to do that, you need to um, spend some time observing the scene, working out how you want to represent it. You need to spend some time fiddling about with camera settings, fiddling about with external filters. Um, again, thinking back to mindfulness, you need to take time and you need to be focusing upon what you're doing. So we have a selection of images here. We have, uh, this is the um, the second seven crossing um, near to Bristol going over to Wales. Um, we have uh, a storm swept beach at Vik in Iceland. We have um, an oncoming storm at sunset, uh, a dirtle door in Dorset in southern England. We have Cheddar Gorge in uh, Wiltshire or Somerset. I'm not sure. Um, and this this was an image that required a significant amount of pre-planning, poring over maps and satellite images and weather reports in order to, to choose a, a viewpoint and a composition before I'd even been um, to the area. Um, uh, long exposures don't have to be um, very, very long. This, this is literally a, a sixth of a second but the combination of the uh, the slightly longer exposure on the the water this is Abba Falls in northern Wales um, and also that that wonderful light that's striking from the side again creates a quite dramatic impressionistic um, painterly feel to the image um, and talking about impressionistic um, this is Savanaka Forest um, and this to me, this is a, 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 a picture that depending upon when you look at it, it's either beautiful and full of light and hope, or it's quite sinister and moody with a almost a, a gigantic spider ensnaring its prey. But if you look at the, um, the beautiful colours in that, that misty autumn scene, 
Um, again, it's quite a painterly feel. It's not just a straight representation of, of, of a forest scene. And when we talk about images that require a lot of planning and forethought, astrophotography, um, you, you, you need to, to find dates in the calendar months in advance where the, the conditions of um, the different types of twilight, the, the phases of the moon all converge to give you um, the conditions required to be able to see and capture the Milky Way as we have here. This, this image was, was shot um, on the cliffs atop Kainan's Cove in Cornwall at about 3 a.m. in the morning. Um, truly, truly majestic um, place to be and quite spiritual. But talking about a, a spiritual experience, and I am an atheist, so when I talk about a spiritual experience, it's quite a big deal. Um, probably the culmination of my, my landscape photography um, experiences was witnessing and photographing the, the dance of the Aurora Borealis over Jokulsjolen Glacial Lagoon in Iceland. And when we talk about mindfulness, when we talk about just taking some time to be in the here and now, to forget about everything else that's going on in our lives, I cannot think of a better example than this, because I saw this almost indescribably beautiful sight, awe-inspiring awe in its majesty. And I photographed it for 15 minutes or so. And then I spent an hour just laid on the ground, gazing up at glory in the heavens. And it was indescribably awesome and probably the greatest night of my life 2.0. And something that I would not have experienced had it not been for um, my journey in photography. So having defined myself as a landscape photographer, I was starting to feel dissatisfied with some of the images I was uh, producing. They were okay, but unlike those that I've shared here, I, I often felt that they seemed sterile in comparison to my actual experience of the taking of them. They were a great representation of the physical reality of the scene I'd witnessed, but they didn't convey any of the emotional reality. I was also painfully aware of trying to emulate images or styles of other photographers that I admired. I wasn't developing my own style, and this seemed at the time to, to be a problem. Rigidly considering myself to be a landscape photographer was actually starting to add stress to my beloved savior. So I started looking around and experimenting with other genres of photography. Um, I tried wildlife photography. I tried macro photography. I tried portraiture. I tried to capture the thrill of watching the process manager and production manager of the factory where I work trying to kill each other on the football pitch. And these were fantastic diversions, truly refreshing the palette and, and making me, me see the possibilities of photographer photography afresh. But I wasn't quite getting that emotional connection that I wanted. And there was a further complication. The value of time. I don't credit photography with curing my bereavement, but it did offer a foundation upon which to build my new life. However, over time, I found several issues afforded by this hobby. Taking a technically good photograph is a skill that you can learn. Taking a truly great photograph requires many other factors. You'll see a number of guides to photography saying that the keys to great images are something like subject, composition, technical skills, light. And they'll usually conclude that the most important of these factors is light. They're wrong. The most important factor to a great photograph is time. Time to scout a location and find a composition. Time to travel to that location on multiple occasions and at ridiculously unsociable hours. Time to fiddle with settings and filters and the million other things that you require on the day. Time later to review the images and to process them. When you're time poor, these factors become difficult to accommodate. And I found that my beloved saviour was starting to become burdensome. 
I was feeling guilty about not spending time with my camera and anxious about the pileup of unprocessed images in my catalogue. Far from easing my mental roller coaster, it was starting to contribute to it. But why was I suddenly time poor? Well, this is the thing. Something wonderful and unexpected happened. Life 3.0. I <laughs> completely unexpectedly found myself meeting and falling in love with a wonderful woman called Penny. And over time, she welcomed me into her life and into her home where she had her two children, Elliot and Rowan. And then later, that gurning little blob at the bottom there, that's my son. My son, Felix. I'd gone from the depths of despair and trying to reconcile a, a, a life of solitude to having everything I'd ever wanted. I have love and I have family. I couldn't give a toss about photography when that's on the table. <laughs> and to be fair to them, they would not stand in my way of, of getting out and, and doing my, my, my photography. They, they certainly don't. But I, I want to maximize my time with, with, with this suffusion of, of love and joy. Um, but I did want to continue. So I needed to find a way of photographing when time poor. And I needed to find photography that reinvigorated me and my love for the hobby. Which takes me on to the greatest image I've ever taken. You may not think so, but I am going to show you what I consider the greatest image that I have ever taken. It is a triptych, a series of three images that becomes a haul. And incredibly pretentiously, I called this Songs of Rage and Sorrow. And it is my attempt at honouring the memory of Esther. It is my attempt at capturing the experience of bereavement, the tumultuous vortex of emotions, of devastating sadness coupled with intense anger and rage and everything in between. And creating this image required me to play with my camera, to experiment, to try doing things with it that I'd never considered before. And it was spectacular. The image that I created, I, I feel so very, very proud of. I feel it is very powerful and I feel it speaks to a very singular experience. Everything about that image tells you about what I have gone through. There is so much emotion captured there, and that is what I wanted. And so experimental, creative photography is the route at which I find myself going time and again. You can do all sorts of weird and wonderful things if you just simply experiment with your camera, with, with different ways of moving it. You can take impressionistic photographs of students in Oxford. You can layer multiple images atop one another to create weird and wonderful and beautiful um, pictures. You can simply try to remove some of the chaos from a forest to create a very clean image of, of dawn breaking through the trees. You can throw your camera around in the back garden to turn what is actually a very boring image of some houses into something spectacular and abstract. And you can find a way of turning a walk in the woods with the family into um, an impressionistic painting. This last one, this is the kicker. This is why it's important to me. These images, which I, which I, I love and I have named spectres, were all taken during the COVID lockdown. They were all captured with my mobile phone. They were all captured while out walking with the family. They took literally seconds to take. They didn't in any way get in the way of family life and family pleasure. It's the perfect merging of photography and family in a way that, 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 that fills me with happiness. 
you may hate these they're, they're obviously very subjective but i i love these images i feel that there's a, again a, a, a tumult of emotion captured there um there is great joy in these images to my to my eyes so that's the story of my photography it's a story of loss and grief and it's a story of redemption and hope it is a story of the love and the loss of one beautiful woman it is the story of finding the love of another beautiful woman it is the story of the completely unexpected and bewildering joy that is a family my photographic journey is ongoing and evolving it has formed the backbone of my recovery from the depths of sadness and now i have integrated into a new life which is once again full of joy and happiness so what do i photograph am i a landscape photographer no i am just a photographer i photograph whatever takes my fancy i've long since discovered that having a style or a genre is absolute tosh it isn't important what you photograph what is important is why you photograph and if referring back to my very first statement the camera is both a mirror and a window my images in all their variety all show one thing me now that got incredibly pretentious towards the end there but i hope in some way i've conveyed how important i find this hobby and i don't think that you have to take up photography but i hope you find something that you can be passionate about and that can can take you on a journey such as mine thank you